Good morning guys and welcome back to The Ridge. My name is Matt Pinella with Matt Bangs Wood and today we are gonna be banging some wood. I don't know why I've never started a video out like that. Today though, we're going to be working on sheeting out the rest of the garage. It's only gonna take us a couple minutes. We have to cut back the roof sheathing. We have a little three inch, four inch piece up at the top there and locally we have to have two feet. You're not allowed to have a small little ripper up top. They're gonna cut that back right now, get a two footer put in the top sheet out the other side of the garage real quick and then from there we have some post and beam to work on with Greg get the back side of the living room done we could stack all the rafters out over there and then not only that we have a lot of sheathing we could run they cut that back they've got two foot rippers going in right now we're gonna head over and do some post and beam on the back side of this place though get that dialed in and wrapped up we've got a post to set two beams to set rafters to lay out ridge to lay out that can stack out today as well it'd be nice to see that done that's where we're headed right now
So those guys are gonna wrap up sheathing the back side of the garage. We're gonna hop over here and start sheeting out this. We can go all the way from here back to there. We've got quite a few sheets that are able to go down right now. I'm actually waiting on delivery on the rest of them still. Not sure why it's taking so long. Hopefully it gets here soon because we're going to need it. We only had one and a half units out here. We're just about burnt through that right now. I'm going to hop back up top though, finish out this back section and keep on trucking. If you guys are new here and you made it this far in the video, I don't know how you did it, but consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Helps me out a lot. So before we sheet out everything, we go through and make sure we have all of our drywall backing installed. We float all of our backing. It's the best way to do it. Sometimes you'll see guys and they'll just put a two by four flat on top of their intersecting walls. And that's what they use as a drywall backer. We'll pull up three and a half inches and then we'll put a block all the way across from there and up. And then we put in a two by four on edge on the edge of the wall. Wall is here, drywall backer goes right there and nail it into the blocks that we installed three and a half inches up on our rafters. What this does is keeps everything in plane with the ceiling. Let's check it out real quick. You guys can see what I mean. We have our wall right here, three and a half inches up, three and a half inches up, two by four on both sides. Now, since we went three and a half inches up to determine where this block was gonna go, that means that our drywall backing here and here are perfectly in plane with the rafters that we have up for this roof. When you have trusses, it's a lot easier because you have a two by four bottom cord. You could put a block across bottom cord to bottom cord and then just run a two by four all the way through there. And that'll act as your backer. We're gonna continue getting this thing sheeted Go until we run out of sheets and then we'll go from there.
So when we get into spots like this, where we've got this roof right here, coming back over onto this one, what we're going to do is build out what we call a cowley. I know it has a different term other places, such as an overframe. We're gonna run a ridge out to where it planes in here and then build back and then shoot this little guy. It's pretty much a dead space where one roof laps another. But we're gonna go ahead and cut the little ridge piece coming out, get this thing framed in, get it sheeted to where it's just done. That way, as soon as we have the outside over there with the rafters done, the TNG done, we sheet it, everything from there back to here is complete. One thing people struggle with a lot is figuring out back cuts. So we have a three and 12, that's what we're sitting on. We have this ridge running through back onto a three and 12. You're not gonna cut it on a three and 12 to carry out that ridge, it needs to be a back cut. And the way you figure it out is pretty easy. Check it out. Since we're working with a three and 12 on this roof, we're just gonna go ahead and put a little mark right there. Once you have your three and 12 mark, you're gonna use your pivot point, which is right up here. Pivot back just like so. And we're gonna carry that line out all the way through. Another quick and easy way you could do this is to take the roof pitch in degrees. Three and 12 is right around 14 degrees. Subtract that from 90, that'll give you your back cut degree as well. You can just go from there down and that would give you, what would that be, 76 degrees? I'm gonna cut this real quick and I'll show you guys how it fits. Easy way to figure out these angles for these back cuts if you don't wanna play around with numbers. Take a block, put a level on top of your little ridge here. Set it right up against the side and just scribe. Once you have your ridge in, you're gonna take a small little chunk cut on a 45, put it up against the ridge where it planes in right there. You're gonna give yourself a mark. Do the same thing down on the bottom wherever it's running in. Snap that line. It should be right around a 45 degree angle right there. Therefore, your cuts on the sleeper that you're gonna put in should be a 45 as well. Pull your number for your sleeper, 40 and three quarters. The little overframes are done like that when two roofs come together. You run your ridge out, project it, run your sleepers, and typically if they're bigger, you'll have rafters laid out like you would on a typical roof. Following layout, and then you sheet over it. You've seen us do them. You've seen them done on many videos that I've done. We're getting the last of the roof sheeting that we have dropped down right now. We have one little piece that we can put out here, a little four footer, and then slap down one more full, and we are out. Fingers crossed our lumber yard pulls through and gets us out our new sheathing. We have quite a bit we can do. I was hoping that this truck would be here a couple hours ago to where we can keep on cheating, but it is what it is. We're gonna get them unloaded right now. Hope you guys have been enjoying this video so far along with the whole series. If you haven't watched the rest of them, link is in the description below to the whole playlist. Go check it out.
In construction, being able to throw and being able to throw properly is very important. We're gonna go over throwing really quick because I feel like it's something a lot of people don't know how to do properly. Two hands, one on the bottom, one up here. Do not throw the spiked end at me. Throw the dull end at me. Hit me in the face. The reason I say that is because if you try to throw it beside me, or under me, or over me, chances are you're not gonna hit me. But if you could throw it directly at somebody's face and attempt to hit them, as long as they're paying attention, they're going to catch it. I take pride in the fact that I can hit somebody from a good 40 feet away. You guys can do the same. On the winery build, we were right around 20 to 26 feet in the air. So you had to be able to throw good. I think I think Fox is waiting for me. Gotta go. What do we need? Hands, pointy end back, throw on the dull end. Hey, go, Foxy! 57 half short point. 57 no, half short point. Now, you guys will think the whole throwing lesson is a complete joke until you throw a spiral at somebody and see how mad they get. Don't do that. Point back, dull end to him. While these guys wrap up fascia, I'm gonna take the reach lift, move some sheets around. We need to get sheet on the back side here. We can sheet out the majority of it. I have some valleys to frame in later on. I'd like to get back over to here as soon as possible and frame out this living room that Greg has going. Let's go check that out real quick. So we'll have rafters going up on here to the ridge beam. We'll have our tongue and groove carrying out from here over to the outside all the way up to the ridge. From there we can sheet. This is gonna be really nice when it's done. It's like the entryway except for quite a bit bigger. In my personal opinion, I wish they would have put this size overhang on the entryway. It would have gave it a bigger appearance, but that's the way they wanted it there, so that's how they're getting it. This is gonna be nice out here though. We got our sheathing back here, have a unit of the 5.8s. Gonna hop up top and start throwing this stuff down. One thing we have to be super careful of when we throw down the roof sheathing is making sure that we do not nail where we don't have a tail. If you look at the trusses and then you look at the tails, they're similar layouts, but you'll have a tail every four feet instead of a truss, which you have every two feet. So it's very easy to accidentally shoot where you don't have a tail. We cannot let that happen. We've been taking our time nailing off the tails, making sure that everything comes out awesome. So one of the first things that we're gonna do when it comes time to doing roof sheathing we are going to snap a line at four foot. The way they package it, you can tell they actually care about the product. So one of the first things we're gonna do when it comes time to getting this roof sheeted, we're gonna snap a line at four foot from this end all the way down. What that's gonna do is give us a guideline to go off of for our sheathing to make sure that the first row is nice and straight. From there, the rest of the rows will follow.
the sweet smell of cigarette. Yeah, well, it's out. <laughs> Part of me thinks, oh yeah, you've quit. You can quit whatever you want. You can go ahead and smoke again. What did you just say? That's what my brain keeps telling me that it's okay for me to smoke again. No. <laughs> I, I know, I know. No. So there's two things we have to have done before we can sheet out a section. A35s, which is our hardware, connecting the roof system to the plates for uplift. They look just like this. And they go right down there. The layout of the A35s will change with different shear schedules. We have six and 12 out here. So 22 inches on center for our A35s which is pretty much 24 inches on center, so every single bay will get an A35. On non sure sections, we have it called out for a typical detail, 48 inches on center. So we could put one here, skip one, one here, skip one, all the way through. Along with that, we have to have what we call catwalks, which is a two by four that runs along the center of the truss every 10 foot, and that keeps the bottom cord of the truss on layout. Be right up over here. These guys are getting the catwalk done on the backside so we can sheet the rest of this thing out right down in here we'll have to do one here as well before we carry on and then we're good to go time to get these guys nailed off then we can keep on sheeting
So those pressure blocks that I put in, I put them in all the way along here. And here, there, over there, and there. To allow us perimeter nailing on this sheet here. You can't just have that floating. We can run all the A35s in here. We've got a good majority of them down, but we're missing some all the way out here. Once those are in, we can shoot this whole backside. End of day, guys. We're gonna go ahead and get on out of here. It was a good Monday. We had a good run. We got this whole side sheeted out over here. Greg's working on his elevations for the backside here. We have the knife plates. Took a while to get fabricated, but as you can see, they're nothing you could buy at a store. So he's gonna take care of those. He's working on the backside right now, getting that all dialed in. You guys will see that tomorrow when everything goes together. We're making good progress. The zip system sheathing has been nice to work with so far. Um, everybody here is pretty stoked on it. It's a nice rigid board. It doesn't feel like a typical OSB where it wants to fall apart. One thing I like about the zip system sheathing rather than your typical sheathing, it gets cold here in the mornings. It does. And it gets misty because we have the marine layer that rolls in and it stays for quite some time. With your typical sheathing, the edges will start to swell up and delaminate. With this stuff here, we have absolutely zero signs of it doing that. I am gonna stress test this stuff and see just how good it does. Um, I'm planning on leaving two different types of materials sitting out here in the sun for a good six months. We'll check back later on during the build, preferably right about the time that they're finishing up. But for now, we're gonna close out the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, big thumbs up, subscribe button is down below. Hope you guys hit it. Only if you enjoyed the video though. My name is Matt Pinella with Matt Bangs Wood. You have watched another episode of The Ridge. I'll see you guys next time. Bang on.